I think that's good by now. Right? Okay. Uh, please ensure that your cell phones have been uh, put on silent or turned off and do not disturb the service. And if you have need of a nursery or training room, they're located to the left once you go out of the uh, auditorium. For our, our sick list, um, we have Julia Jones. Covering from the Angio Plaque Senior. So please keep her in your prayers. Uh, Brother Charles Crawford is returning from a fall at the Hillside Medical Lodge in Gainesville. So please keep him in your prayers as well. And Brother James Say will have surgery on Wednesday, March 22nd. So keep him in your prayers as well. Brother um, Al Wilson, um, maybe in the news this morning, said that they've had a uh, Two deaths of the soldiers in the past week. And um, please pay for the family of Johnny Carnes to help give them some open and comfort. Please pray that uh, the Wilson be able to follow. Uh, visitation team three has um, assignments and you may have to reassign who you're you're getting them from, but please be aware that you have assignments. Um, ladies, information due to the damage that occurred in the fellowship hall, uh, the movie night that was scheduled for the 26th will have to be rescheduled. In the We're also doing a parent tree drive for the charity home for children. Uh, we're collecting tomato products between March 14th and April 25th. So the items requested are pasta sauces, rotel, canned tomatoes, and salsa. And these items can be placed in the foyer. There's a, a large white chest in the back if it doesn't fit, just put it next to it. And we can take care of that. Also, we were, we'll be having a work party for our annual cleanup at our campground. Uh, the dates will be April 9th, sorry, April 10th at 9, and the rain date Saturday, April 17th, if we're unable to do this today. So put an April 10th on your calendar for the, the cleanup. And if it rains us out, April 17th. If you have any questions, please see Brother Roger Lee. Our song leader today will be Brother Paul Courtney. First prayer will be led by Brother Lee Fisher. Our scripture reading will be, will be read by Brother Darrell Higginbotham. Our sermon will be brought by Brother Dan Tarter, and our closing prayers will be by Brother Rodney Tarter. Are there any announcements that I may have missed? Let us begin. Our first election this morning will be number 288. 288. Pardon this selection. We'll have our prayer. Yeah. Oh, why would it be? Thank 
tell them how I got it near. morning, Father, as we come before your righteous throne, we ask that we may put away the things of this life, this hour, that our focus be upon you and your worship. To do our best, Father, to give you all honor and praise in the song of this morning. We pray, Father, that the things that we say Prayers offered, Father, come up before thee in such a way to have favor upon us. Father, we are mindful always of a number of our body, Father, who are not present here with us. We pray for them. We pray for our shut-ins. We pray for those in nursing homes. And we pray for those, Father, who faith is not where it should be, that we may realize the need, Father, to assemble these things. We ask, Father, and my, our mindful Father of those that gave in his mention this morning or continue to have problems and struggles with their health. And we ask that blessings to, to, to be with them. Continue to be with Julia Jones and, and her difficulty. And we ask, Father, that she may be restored and get stronger in their health as well. And we pray, Father, for Brother Paul. Continue to bless him to continue to get well. And we are mindful, Father, of Brother C in his upcoming surgery. We pray, Father, that that will be a success and it will bring about a good health for him. Father, we also 
understand in life there's a time for everything, a time to be born, and a time to die. But we are mindful, Father, of the family, of those coaches, Father, who, who lost them recently. And we pray for those families. We ask, Father, that you may draw closer to them during their period of grief. And we're thankful, Father, for Brother Wilson, Father, and desire, Father, to, to minister unto them, to be there for them. We pray, Father, that you may give them strength to, to be able to carry out those tasks that, that is needed to, to help them. We're thankful, Father, for the fact that the gospel, Father, is so important. We realize, Father, the gospel can save us in this time. Help us as, as your children, Father, as your earthen vessels, Father, we go forward, Father, and always teach those who are born of us. Thank you, Father, for, for the congregation and the opportunities, Father, that you give us and put before us to, to show ourselves before you, to have the faith, Father, that, that, that we need to have and let you know, Father, that we are faithful children and we'll do our best, Father, in the Christian walk in life. Thank you, Father, for the congregation here as well. We continue to pray for each and every one of those that are struggling with health, those who are, who are also lacking, Father, in faith. We pray for them that they may realize the need to return of the beautiful body. We pray also, Father, continually for our leadership. Continue to bless us and the things that we try to put in place for your glory. We're thankful, Father, this morning for, for our families. We realize, Father, families are so important. Help us as, as fathers, grandparents, husbands, father and wives, Father, to do our best, Father, to maintain our family, to, to love our family, to always guide our families, Father, towards you in the way. Now, Father, as we continue our worship service, we ask, Father, that you may be with Brother Dan as he prepares us to, prepare us to bring us a uh, word from, from your scriptures. Father, we know the words are very important. We know that your words, Father, can edify us. We know that your words, Father, can, can guide us when we are lost and influence us always to do what you want. Thank you for Paul and his, his singing abilities. And we pray, Father, that you may continue to be with him this morning as he leads us. Now, Father, as we continue to work for service, we ask that blessings be upon us and forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, 
vision has been brought down. Jesus gave his life for the ransom, gathered on Calvary, on my Calvary, through the Calvary. And oh, when my blood that we might put red shining crown, red in his holy name, salvation of his love, praise the Lord, salvation of his love. Good to see each and every one of you here this morning. Those of you who are visiting with us, you are certainly welcome. And of course, those of you who have tuned in to our broadcast. I hope and I pray that the things that we discuss today will be a benefit and profit to each and every one of us. Please keep in prayer those that have been mentioned. Those that are about to have surgery, please remember them. We thank you so very much for your kindness and goodness that is shown in helping those who are in need at the present time. I think that's my life point now, and really as far back as I can remember in preaching the message of Christ. The thing that has involved my mind more than anything else has been the idea of being able to go to heaven. I understand. We get so wrapped up in the things of this life 
It's hard to visualize that there is another life and that we've been invited to go there. The problem comes when we're trying to get that associated in our mind with the life that we're living now. Some of us are so involved in life on this earth that we can't visualize that there is something that is far better. I know that when we become ill, those things come into our mind. But really, brothers and sisters, we need to be thinking about it all the time. Life here is short. We're only going to be here a short period of time. It doesn't, doesn't matter how old we get. I have known folks who have reached 100 years old. I had the funeral service for a brother in San Antonio that had reached 104. That's an old period of time for us today. Now we can go back in the Old Testament. We can see that people live much longer. Things were quite different. Nowadays, as the Bible says, our years are 70. And if by reason of strength they grow to be 80, Yet then is their strength of labor and toil, we have soon cut off and we fly away. I desire to go to heaven. But the second point is that I desire to take as many with me that want to go. So I preach the gospel. I remember what Paul wrote to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4, beginning in verse 13. If I tarry long, that thou may know how thou oughtest behave thyself, and to study, and to exhort, and to preach the doctrine. For the time will come, they won't want to hear it. But you preach and you teach his word. And if you so do, then you can go to heaven. And all of those who desire to hear you can go if they're obedient. It's important then that the message of Jesus Christ be preached. But it is also important that once we hear it and we obey it, that our lives become a part of God to such an extent that it makes no difference what happens here. We know we're on the way to heaven. So that's what he wrote in Hebrews 2, 1 through 3. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things that we have heard. Lest at any time we should let them slip. Or if words spoken by angels were steadfast and every transgression and disobedience Receive the just recompense of reward. How should we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Which at the first began to be spoken by our Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. I like what John wrote in 1 John 1. Brethren, Jesus Christ, who is God, came and of whom I have spoken to you, and now I write unto you those things that you might know. That's the same thing that Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 3, when he said that we have spoken the word to you, therefore now it is written down, so that when you read it, you may understand our knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Brothers and sisters, we have the Word of God. The Word of God is given to us by inspiration that we might know what God desires of us. In our Bible class this morning, Israel became a great example for those of us who are alive today. When they came near the Promised Land, in fact, folks, within two years, they would have been in the Promised Land. But they sent out those spies who went out to search the land. Remember when they came back? 
they caused the people to become disheartened. Joshua and Caleb stood up and said, no, it's just exactly like God said. The other 10 refused. Said, no, we're like grasshoppers. The land eats up the inhabitants thereof. And there's no way we can do it. No, without God, we can't do it, folks. That was the whole problem of it. By the way, all of those original ones from 20 years up died in the wilderness. The only two that made it were the two honest spies, Joshua and Caleb. I remember old Caleb when he got in the land, the portion of land that he was to have was inhabited by giants. So he said to the leaders, God promised me this way. And me and God are going to take it. And he did. Folks, I want to tell you something. With God on our side, we're victorious. The problem is, we've got to have that faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And the problem is, we're not listening as we should to the Word of God. What I wanted to see in this reading in Hebrews 2, He has prepared for us a great salvation. It's great because we're the recipients of it. I'm going to be quite honest with you this morning. I really wonder about things. I really do. I wonder if we're the only people. Oh, come on, man. Come on. I know he made angels. <coughs> And I know the Bible talks about principalities and power <laughs> in heavenly places. Are we the only ones? Can I tell you something that the Bible says in the Hebrew letter? That when the angels sinned, there was no forgiveness. They were sent away. Do you realize that you and I are the recipients of the greatest blessing that has ever been given? Well, what about our life? Oh, it's okay. But our life here is nothing. We haven't seen nothing yet. God made angels. And I'm told in the Ephesian letter that now we can enjoy a salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, welded together in one body. Makes no difference where you came from. Makes no difference whether you're male or female. Makes no difference your nationality. We can all be one in Christ. That has not always been so. God had to prepare the way for a great salvation. And the great salvation would include everyone who wanted to go to hell. And he did it through Jesus Christ. But it took centuries. He had to prepare a people for whom the incarnation would come. And that was it. Jesus was born to stop Abraham. Through his line, through Judah, came forth Christ. God prepared all of that. But you know what the scripture says in Mark 16? He did go to the Jews first, but they were not the only ones to receive the great salvation. Everyone was. So the record tells us. That our Lord said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes it and is baptized shall be saved. 
He that will receive it not will believe it not will be condemned. Think about it. Every soul, not just Jews, but the Gentile folks. I don't know what runs in my veins. I know blood does, and I know that Papa used to tell us that Grandma was from Germany, and that our other great grandpa, he was from Ireland. What difference does it make? We're all one in Christ. You understand me? So you want to say, well, Brother Dan, why does he call it the great salvation? Because every one of us can go to heaven if we want to. If you don't want to, that's your business. No one can make you. In fact, it wouldn't be good if somebody twisted your arm and made you obey the Lord, would it? It has to come out of your heart. So he made it a great salvation for everybody. He said, except you believe that I am he, you will die in your sin. John 8, 24. The more I go, you can't come. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, verse 17. I heard the word of God. I believed in Jesus Christ. I turned away from my sins. I was just as sinful as anybody else. That's Romans 3, 23. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. <clears throat> and the reward of sin is death. Romans 6, 23. So you see, we, we were dead in our trespasses and sins. But when I heard the word of God and I believed in Jesus Christ as he told me to do I was told to repent, turn away from your sins, Luke 13, 3. That if you don't repent, you're going to perish. So I repented. I was told if you will confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father who is in heaven. But if you deny me, I will deny you. Romans 10, 9 and 10. With a heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with his mouth confession is made unto salvation. As they went on their way, they came into a certain water. And the Ethiopian said unto him, Here's water, I'm ready to be baptized. He said, You can if you believe, and he said, I do. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They both went down into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Came up out of the water. Philip went on his way, and the Ethiopian went on his way rejoicing. He obeyed the Lord. On the day of Pentecost, that great gospel was preached by Simon Peter. And a great number of people were there. And out of that number, 3,000 obeyed. They cried, what do we need to do? And he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. 3,000 of them obeyed. There were, there's no way of knowing how many thousands didn't obey, folks. Do you hear me? We always talk about the 3,000 that obeyed. What about all of those thousands that didn't? They have a choice. Just like I have a choice, and just like you have a choice. It's your decision. No one can make it for you. You believe on Christ, then you repent of your sins. You let the world know He's my Lord, He's my Savior. I confess it. And I'm baptized into Christ for remission of my sin. It's a great salvation because he let me go to heaven. Nothing could be any greater than that. 
It's not because I'm so good, because I'm not. I'm a human being. And I've made mistakes on top of mistakes. <clears throat> and ask the Lord, forgive me through Jesus Christ. So I go to Hebrews or I go to Ephesians 1 and verses 14 and following. And I listen to him make the statement that we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of our sins. That makes it great salvation. Great because I can obey it, but great because someone did it for me. Without the shed blood of Christ, you and I didn't make it. That's all there is to it. If he hadn't come and died, why did he do it? What made me, what made you so special? Why did God so love us? Did you know the record says that the angels desired to look into our salvation? That's first Peter chapter one and verse twelve. The angels of sin he cast them down. What about you? What about me? What if he ever said, Dan, that's it? Hell is your home. But not what he did. He sent Christ to die for me. Now see, there's things about God that you and I, there's no way we can know. They're just if some preacher stands up and tells you, I'll tell you all about God, get away from him. There's things about the Almighty that you and I will never understand. Not here. Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret things belong to God, but I want you to know I'll reveal to you through the word of the parish. I don't understand how God can do it. I've got two boys, and I've told you guys this before. If you were sentenced to death, would I tell John or James, I want you to take his place? No way, brother. Right? Well, how could God do it? What is there about the Almighty? God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. What is it? What is it about the spirit world that you and I have? It's just no way. I can't put a finger on it. I'd like to be able to tell you more, but I can't. I will tell you this, and He loved me so much. That he let his Christ die for him. That's what he called. Genesis chapter 3. This is how I felt. Adam and Eve sinned. Trying to grasp God's law. Tell me, what did they do then? <clears throat> They got fig leaves and they sewed them together. They saw that they were naked. You read that, right? They saw they were naked. Job 121. Naked came I into the world, and naked I will go out. But I will praise the name of all my who are we? We are the recipients of the greatest thing that has ever been presented, and that is salvation. It costs the blood of Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15, 21 and 22, for by man came sin, came death. By man also came the resurrection from the dead. For as in the Adam, we all sin for dead. In Christ, we can be made alive. Beautiful. 
Why do you do it? Look at me. Am I that special? Why does he want me in heaven? Why does he want you there? You want to explain the Almighty to me? That's why the love of God constrains us. It's just beyond any comparison. Then the last point, the consolation. The end of it. Matthew 16, 26. For what is a man profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? I don't think we realize. I've been talking about things that we don't understand about God. Would you explain me? Would you explain you? Can you tell me who you are? Can you explain your soul? Can you explain your spirit? What shall it profit you if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul? Matthew 16, verse The greatest summation is Matthew 25, verse 34. Come, you blessed of my Father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Well, Lord, why me? Because I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink of water. I was sick and you ministered to me. I was naked and you clothed me. Lord, when did we see you like this? When you've done it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. <clears throat> Folks, you realize we become God-like when we're obedient and walk like Jesus did. Although that's an old song, this old world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. I'll never feel at home in this old world anymore. Are you on your way to heaven? You want to go there with me? I want to go. I want to see my sweet wife again. I want to see mom and dad. I want to be my brothers. Oh, I know it will not be like it is here. How will I know them? Nobody's got a voice like Jeannie. Somehow or other, I'll know them. When Jesus was transfigured to show his glory, there appeared Moses and Elijah. Men who had been dead a long, long time, but it was still Moses and Elijah. It's us. It's our soul. Where are you going? Oh, there's another little song. Where are you going to spend your eternity? I know we can't spend it, but that's the way the song goes. Where will you spend your eternity? That's why salvation is great, and that's why we need to be obedient. If you're subject this morning to the invitation of Christ, all things are ready. We invite you to come to Him. Those of you who are in the viewing audience and participating that way, if you have any need, please let us know. Jesus said, Go and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. We proclaim his word. We do what he said to do.
Then be faithful unto death, and you shall receive a crown of life. Revelation 2 10. If you need to respond in any manner to the call of the Lord this morning, please come. We will stand in the such that we'll reach out to everyone and in kindness and love try to encourage them in the way of life. Let's please pray. Father, we thank you for God and for his strength and for his courage. We know the difficulties that he has his family to present time. We pray for his wife. We pray for his children. We pray that you'll be with God. Bless him. And we thank you, Father, for his good heart. And we pray that all of us may realize how important it is to make heaven our home, our priority, Christ, and thy way our way. And may we therefore help others. Forgive us, Heavenly Father, to give God bless him, strengthen him in Jesus' name. <clears throat> in preparation for the Lord's Day, 228. 
switching weight. Let's say all four verses are in the fourth again. All four verses are in the fourth again.
life was secure. That's the scripture says. For I have received of the Lord that which also I have. And the Lord Jesus, on the same night, which when he gave thanks, he break it and say, Take, eat, eat this to my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the new testament of my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body of the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not deserted the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you. Amen. 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 Our Father in heaven, we are thankful for thy Son, Jesus Christ, who lived and died on the cruise for the cross. We are thankful, Father, that he rose the third day. And we are thankful, Father, for what he set the example for us, each and every one of us. Let us commemorate together. Let us be thankful for what he done for us as we partake of this presence in a manner that is pleasing and acceptable unto you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Yes. Examine ourselves that we are not contradicting what our word said, that we partake of it in a manner that is pleasing and acceptable before you. In Christ's name, amen. <clears throat> We thank you for being with us this morning and worship God and pray for 
once again, and that's one time. As a sort of closing number 115, one and two, the song, and then we let our children pray. <laughs> Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy, my hope. He is my strength, my faith today, my heart to my heart will fall. And I stand in my help, when all the storm lingered inside. When I stand, he makes me cry. I really didn't sing directly to Together to study your word, be strengthened by the words of life, to worship you in spirit and in truth, decency and glory. We pray that what we did today was pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We ask, Father, that as we depart, that you would be with us, Father, to protect us from the fire fire of darts of the devil. Lord, that is too much full of her, so we can make them out. Help us to strengthen one another to love one another better than we have before. Father, forgive us of our sins. Strengthen us in every area we are in and build us up with years one and now. Help us to be the better examples of Christ's love, but at the same time, to not compromise. Standing third in front of the world. And I can wear it wear it for the young love. If you have got children, my grandchildren, and all our grandchildren, and we cannot be with them every day, every time. We ask the Father that as our young make the city, we ask the Father that we all remember the things we taught in the world. We ask Father that you be with us as we endeavor to teach the law. Endeavor now to come to the church. We ask Father that you be helpful to those who are in the church. The application of the faith is the truth of God. We ask God that he will bless us and come with him at the next day. We ask this and every person in the Son of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> 